guys it is Danny and welcome to this updated video on the tropics and so in this video we're going to be talking about what is currently taking place across the basin so we'll be looking at a disturbance as well as a tropical storm over in the eastern pacific as well as or two disturbances that are of concern that we have to pay attention to over in the atlantic basin so before i go into details Okay, and so let us kickstart things with the Eastern Pacific. So as of right now, looking at the five-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center, we're seeing here that we have Tropical Storm Kevin as well as that disturbance which is highlighted in red, which means that the chance is high for development. So let's look at it in a bit of detail. And so we're seeing here that it is given a high 90% chance to develop into a tropical cyclone during the next five days. And so this is actually designated as Invest 93E. And the system, fortunately, is going to be well offshore off anywhere and not going to be much of a threat to land as it is going to be making its way a bit to the west and to the west northwest and so now going to kevin and so kevin is a tropical storm that is strengthening and it currently has sustained winds of 60 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the west at 8 miles per hour and by tomorrow evening we're expecting that it will become a category one hurricane and it is not expected to become one that is going to be very strong due to cooler waters that is going to be accelerating in as it makes its way to the northwest and so we can expect it to be downgraded back to a tropical storm from being a hurricane near the end of this week on thursday and eventually it's going to continue weakening until eventually it dissipates most likely by the end of this week or very early next week and so now let us go on and let's see what these systems look like on satellite view so first up is kevin and kevin isn't looking very very organized but it is getting in shape we do see some areas of very deep convection and some of that might be brushing onto some of the southwesterly portions of mexico but nothing too significant from the system but now let us take a look at 93 and we're seeing here that it is not organized at all but as time goes by we're expecting it to look a lot better because it is going to be in favorable conditions that are going to be aiding in its intensification and development and so now let's go on over into the atlantic basin so here we have invests 93 and 94 l and so we're going to be talking about 93 l first so that is or disturbance that is more to the right and so we're seeing here that it is currently given a 40 percent chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone during the next five days so the chance is a little bit stagnant right here and so we're expecting it to move generally westward slowly and the lesser antilles will be affected by the system and so if you're in any of the islands you want to keep an eye on this and even if it passes uh, a bit more south towards with windward islands the leeward islands could still feel impacts because the system most likely might not be one that is very very organized at the time when it's going to be approaching so it is best that if you're there at all please take necessary precautions and stay safe uh, there are some general things you can do from now to ensure your preparation should in case the system intensifies and becomes something very significant so some general things to prepare for any tropical cyclone are ensuring that you don't have any large trees around your house that might cause damage in the event of strong winds uh, if you're in a flood prone area know where to go if you should evacuate due to inundation as a result of floodwaters and have all of your important files and documents in something that is safe reachable and waterproof looking at the satellite view of our system here we're seeing here that it is looking a little bit organized but it's not really there we don't have a whole lot of convection associated with 93l but as time goes by if it is going to be in those uh conducive conditions that are going to be helping it to intensify we're going to eventually see it looking a lot better on satellite and so now let's go on to 94l so this is or disturbance closer to the caribbean and so this is given a 50 percent chance so the chance is slightly risen for it to develop into a tropical cyclone and uh, tropical cyclone development is certainly possible we might have a depression probably in the next couple of days or so but again guys this is not guaranteed to happen we just have to wait and see the eventual outcome with the system but based on this track that we're seeing here the system is going to be moving a bit more westward and then to the west northwest and so this is looking as though it might head into the gulf of mexico and i've said this multiple times the gulf of mexico is usually a hot spot where we have our systems uh, develop and intensify once conditions there are right so once we don't have any dry air intrusion the wind shear is conducive as well as those very warm ocean waters which are already there once we have all three 
either of those conditions coming into place, then it is likely that we will have some rapid intensification taking place. And remember guys, we are in August approaching the month of September, which is the peak of the hurricane season. And so we can expect a lot of tropical cyclones going forward as we move into the peak. And NOAA has upgraded their prediction. If you haven't seen it, they are now predicting 15 to 21 named storms of which 7 to 10 could acquire hurricane status and 3 to 5 major hurricanes. And just to be clear, a major hurricane has winds that are beyond 111 miles per hour or simply put category 3 or higher on the Sapphire Simpson scale. So there's a 65% chance of above normal activity. So it is very likely that we could have a lot of storms as we're going to be heading later down in the season. The favorable conditions are really going to be setting in for us to have some really intense tropical cyclones. And even if we don't have a lot, it just takes one. And that is why we always emphasize making all the necessary preparation should in case you're to be affected by a tropical cyclone, especially if you live in regions such as the Caribbean, uh, the Bahamas, the Gulf Coast, the East Coast. And those are areas that are usually affected and even Central America as well. So guys, please take the necessary precautions and stay safe. You cannot underestimate the potential of these systems here. And so in terms of the model intensity guidance, looking at 93L, we're seeing here that most of our models are not expecting imminent development. But as we approach uh, probably the next 84 hours or so, that is when our models are showing maybe it achieves depression or tropical storm status right there. Uh, some are even expecting it to become a hurricane very later down. And so we really have to wait and see what's going to be happening. But in terms of 94L, all of our models available are expecting it to become a tropical storm and even two are agreeing to it becoming a hurricane and this is quite concerning so guys if you're in the eastern or northern caribbean you want to pay attention to these systems and ensure that you have your plans in place as i said earlier and so now let us take a look at current conditions across the basin so first up ocean temperatures and look at the gulf of mexico very very favorable at this time these are the ocean temperatures to cause some very rapid intensification of our systems when they are developing and then in the Caribbean it is very warm as well in the vicinity of the Bahamas and uh, looking at the wind shear map now the different colors here show different shear intensities so we have the green meaning favorable the yellow being neutral and the red being unfavorable so whenever you see a lot of those reds that means that we want to have much intensification taking place of a tropical system because that is what usually rips up the thunderstorms and prevent the systems from from intensifying much but whereas if you see a lot of those greens that mean that the environment is quite favorable to support our systems to develop and so now in terms of the saharan dust the different colors here show how dense the dust is so when you're seeing all of those yellows it means that there isn't a whole lot but as we head to the dark orange and that red that is when we have a whole lot and so we do have a small pocket very close to the lesser Antilles right there and so our systems are not really in those in that uh, unfavorable region right now so that could be the only inhibiting factor probably some moderate shear as well but we really have to wait and see what the eventual outcome is going to be for both of these systems guys and so I implore you all if you're in the lesser Antilles please take those precautions stay safe and keep track of these systems because they could even surprise us we have to wait and see what the outcome is going to be I will keep you updated as time goes by and so if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be with the wise